Welcome back to the channel. We're carrying on with the spindle today. Obviously, if you see the last video, the spindle's redone, it's put back together, it's back in the machine, and we've carried out the three hour um, braking cycle for the spindle. When everything seemed good, temperature was good, oil was coming through the, um, the nose for the spindle bearings. So as far as I'm concerned, everything seemed fine. Um, it sounded good, no issues. Um, but before we go ahead and go any further to making test cuts, I wanted to put a test bar in the spindle, run it up and down, clock around it, see what sort of run out we got, to see if I need to place any shims between the spindle cartridge and the spindle head casting. Some machines come with shims. This one never had um, shims fitted when I took it out. But when I took the donor spindle from the VF0E that I scrapped, that did have shims in it. So interesting to see if I need them. So I've got a 300 millimeter ground test bar that I've got from Amiga products in the UK. It's about two, 280 pounds, can't remember. Um, so it's surface ground on a BT40 taper. And uh, did I just say, yes, a 300 millimeter length. So we're just gonna run it up and down in the spindle um, and rotate the spindle and just see what sort of run out we are getting at the top and bottom to see if it looks good. So there's the test bar. And we've got an indicator on there. Now I haven't set the indicator dead to zero, but we're gonna see the movement anyway. So this is a two micron indicator, and we're now gonna run the spindle down and just see what sort of readings we get. Now I think this machine's got a little bit of um, slop around in the Y axis because the indicator jumps a little bit sketchy when you move it in the Y. Obviously we're only doing the Z now, but you can see there for a two micron indicator, It's got a little bit of floating around, but you're only a couple of microns, maybe four maximum. So that seems okay. So if we bring the spindle down now, and if I get the writing in there, you'll see. And now what I'm gonna do, just by hand, I'm gonna rotate the spindle, and we'll see where we are. Actually, let's run it. I might as well just run a program on it, mightn't I? So if I put S, If I do 10 RPM, and we'll just see what sort of movement we get. So we're getting around two microns there. That's the annoying thing about these gearbox machines is the fan comes on. So let's go to the bottom now. and see what sort of run out we're getting at the bottom. So we're getting approximately four to five microns, I think that is. Yeah, about four to five microns at the full extension, the full 12 inch of the bar. So to me, I would say, let's just reset that and stop that a second. So to me, that's looking good. And I'd say I don't need any shims on it. Compressor as always. Um, I'll clock, obviously if it's turning there and it's good, I'll clock it up the other side just to make sure everything seems good. Um, but I think that's fine without shims. So. I am now going to remove the indicator and stuff off the, off the bed and then I'm going to get the job set up to take some cuts in this mild steel that we're going to do just to try it out. So I've got to take all the tools that I had set up in the VF0E, take all that lot out, move it all over, set it back up on this machine and um, fingers crossed we'll see how it goes. So bear with me a minute and I'll bring you back when we're ready to cut. Okay, so we've got the job set up in the machine. We've got all our tools set up and touched off workpiece. We do op one in here and then the program cycles straight into op two. Um, 
But in the initial stage, I do an optional stop between it to make sure everything's okay. So there's nothing in up to at the minute, but we're gonna see it cut off one. Now, this is only mild still. Um, EN3B, so it's as free machining as it's pretty much gonna get in a flat bar form. Um, again, it, this is very simple material, but prior, for me running this program in this machine, everything stuck and squealed, and I broke some 10 mil mils, which I shouldn't really have done, and it wasn't the feeds and speeds, but um, it is what it is. So, I'm quite nervous, but this is the first cut. Program's in, obviously you can see it's not cutting anything yet, table's dry, we're ready to go. Um, so let's see what happens. Hopefully I ain't made no silly mistakes. The only thing I haven't set yet is the um, the coolant flow. So we need to set that. Just got the rapid turn down so I can um, see where we're at with the coolant and we're good. So it's not taking big cuts. It wasn't taking big cuts before. It's a 10 mil end mil, um, and I think we've got a two or a three mil step over. I think it's a two mil step over, and we are cutting um, on this first stop only seven mil depth for cut. So again, it is minimal, but this is why it was so annoying that this sort of light cut would make the tools stick, which meant you can't walk away. And this is only a 16 minute cycle, um, and then I think it's 16 minutes or 30 minutes on the other side. So nearly half an hour where I could go do something else, earn more money doing something else, a bit of welding or doing the other machine. But I couldn't walk away because I had to do optional stop and I had to be there for every tool change. So it sounds good. Um, obviously the load, the load meter is low. It's cutting nice. It actually sounds much better than this machine does, which is interesting. Um, this tool, tools don't stick badly in this taper, but you get a lot of loud popping. So it definitely sounds quieter cutting in here than it did in there. So that's a good sign. Once I've run this program, I'll probably just finish this job to get it done and out of the way. But in the future, if all is well, obviously you'll start ramping up, staking bigger cuts, bigger end mills on, depending on what job I'm doing. And we'll see, you know, see if it performs across the board, because this isn't much of a test, you're going to say. And I kind of agree, we're tickling away at this material. We're not exactly Titans of CNC, um, 30 mil full depth slotting or anything like that. But it's good to see that it's working. Now it's going to be a few minutes before it does a tool change. And I kind of don't want to cut the video because you might think, um, you know, I've done something in between and you're not going to see the very first tool change. But I might have to talk for the next five minutes. But I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you what I'll do. I wanted to explain something that was mentioned on my previous part of the spindle video. And that was to do with the drawbar, um, the false reading on my drawbar. The confusion about the fact that I'm talking about there being um, 30 bar of drawbar pressure. And um, one of you guys picked up on the comments saying, well, hang on a minute, a bar is 14.5 psi, you're saying 30 bar and we're saying that the Haas drawbar said it needs to be 2,300 pounds <coughs> and there was a bit of confusion so I've since found out two things. The first thing is that the Haas drawbar spec for this machine um, oh look we're going to do a change little tiny pop but it didn't get stuck cut back in so that's the kind of tool change we get in there. You get that little tiny pop and it seems to be a Haas thing. Um, but that would never have come out there. That would have been a hammer job on the tool change, optional stop. So I'm happy with that. So let's keep it going um, and we come back to this. So yeah, the Haas spec for that machine, the drawbar says it's 1,000 to 1,300 pounds. Now, when I looked at another spec sheet on Haas's website, so both these things are on Haas's website. 
One of them is under drawbar identification um, chart. That identifies the drawbar that Hass quoted me on, and I'm going by that part number, um, 303410D, I think it was, and that states that it's a 1,000 to 1,300 pound false drawbar. Um, previously, on the other Hass sheet about drawbar false, it states that all 40 taper VMCs are 1,460 pounds to 2,300 pounds. That's quite a big difference. Um, anyway, so I'm now going by the false that has quoted me on the drawbar spec, which is 1,000 to 1,300 pounds. Bear with me, I know it's a bit tedious. Um, now, when I put that on my bar, on my false gauge for the spindle, that doesn't relate to um, the bar pressure, but for some reason it doesn't read like that. So, here's my spindle force drawbar gauge, whatever you want to call it. Now my gauge reads in bar PSI, but that's not a direct reading to um, pounds per square inch in that sense, which I know that doesn't make any sense, but this converts to kilograms of false. Now Along here, you'll see that they've got, uh, it's not on that bit, it's here, they give you a little chart. So they're saying 30 bar, 40 bar, 50 bar. Now if you go up at 30 bar, that takes you up to around 600 kilograms of force. Now the way I've worked it out is obviously uh, pounds on the Hass site, so let's say you've got 2,300 pounds, equates to 1,040 kilograms if you do the math in that, roughly 2.2 pounds a kilo. That's how I've done it, which means if I'm looking for, obviously this I know is now not what I've gone for, I've gone for 1,300 pounds, equates to around 30 bar. So this gauge, it's not a direct reading to the, um, the pressure that you'd see in the sense of what would 2,300 pounds. Hang on one second. So if we did, let's say I did 1,300 pounds divided by 14.5 psi, you're talking about 89 bar. Now the draw bar is not meant to be 89 bar, so that's where the confusion is um, as to me saying it's reading 20 bar, 30 bar, 40 bar. I'm relating it to the graph that's supplied with this pull stud meter. Now I've verified that that's pretty much correct reading. Um, I meet up with a few friends who are also machinists. We tested it in the uh, in a Hass mini mill, which has got a lower spec draw bar. We tested it in a TMP2 tool room mill, which has got a lower spec. But then we also tested it in a Duson um, mill, like full VMC, and it and it equates and it works out right. So. It's a little bit cack handed and I understand how people misunderstood it, but that is where we're at with that pressure. And in here we're just over. I'm at 32 to 33 bar exactly, which puts me at around 1450 pounds of force. So as far as I can tell, that's what it should be. Now until I get into bigger, heavier cuts, I'm not going to know if that makes a difference. But I am really happy that one, we're cutting quietly. This tool that's going round at the minute is just um, taking a 0.25 finish pass on the floor. But it's cutting quietly and it's changing tools. So I'm going to let this program run. Um, I might do a few more snippets so I'm not talking the whole time about what's going on. But the spindle's in and I'm going to call that a success. So I'm just wrapping up for the end of the day and an update. End of the day, so we've run six hours straight on these mild steel parts. It's only EN3B, like I said, light cuts, but we didn't have a single stuck tool change and we didn't have a single broken end mill. So that's a massive improvement. I was able to walk away all day um, just to come back every 30 minutes to change and swap over the parts and allowed me to get on with other stuff. So really happy and I'm definitely going to be redoing the spindle in this machine um, because we get the odd stuck tool, but that's not so much of a rush. And because I've got the spindle that's out of that one that's bad, that's the one I'm going to take apart. So in theory, uh, not in theory, I will eventually end up with one spare spindle because all three spindles, um, I've got one in each machine and the spare one, all three spindles are the same. 
So I'm hoping that I'll have one built up um, ready to go in the future if and when I need it. But I'll do that as and when. But yeah, really happy with the spindle rebuild. It's definitely changed the game for me on this machine. So, yeah, thanks for watching.